Hey, good morning and welcome back. We're in the book of Exodus today, today chapter 25, verses 10 through 15. And so we're looking here, uh, God is giving instructions about building the sanctuary. Let's read these very quickly. This is a piece, the first thing they're going to build after the main instruction about building the sanctuary. Suddenly we're talking about the ark. Well, why are we talking about the ark first? Well, let's read. They shall construct an ark of acacia wood, two and a half cubits long and one and a half cubits wide and one and a half cubits high. You shall overlay it with pure gold inside and out. You shall overlay it. You shall make a gold molding around it. You shall cast four gold rings for it and fasten them on its four feet. And two rings shall be on one side of it and two rings on the other side of it. You shall make poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. You shall put the poles into the rings on the sides of the ark to carry the ark with them. The poles shall remain in the rings of the ark. They shall not be removed from it. So the first piece of furniture, so we really have two things right here. We have the sanctuary structure itself. We're going to get instructions about all that. And then we have different bits of furniture, different pieces of furniture, the candlestick and so on inside the sanctuary. We'll talk about more in detail as we go. And then there's going to be, of course, you know, the, the garments of the priests and so on. But for now, we're looking at this. These are the two main things. And the first one that comes up is the Ark, the Ark of the Covenant. And it is, uh, now a cubit is... Everybody looks at it and says, we think it's about 18 inches. So more or less the distance between your elbow and the tip of your long finger, that's about a cubit. So let me give you a little bit here from one of the commentaries. I forgot which one this was, but here's the quote. Although it might seem more systematic to begin with a description of the design of the tabernacle and then to address the particular furnishings that fit within it, the importance of the ark as the item that would symbolize God's presence among his people far outweighs any such considerations, and its design, therefore, was described first, even before that of the tabernacle that would house it. That's kind of an interesting observation, that before he's even describing the rest of the tabernacle, this is the most holy business here, the, the, the Ark, the Ark of the Covenant, this is described first before anything, okay? So this is sort of highlighting the extraordinary holiness of the Ark of the Covenant. Because God's gonna put something in there, let me give you a little clue here. L-A-W are the letters, but we'll, we'll say more. There's another piece here that I found quite interesting that I hadn't really thought of before, and you might have noticed it or might not. The poles, there's, there's feet on the Ark, and there are poles, rings developed there, and there are these long poles that are used to carry the Ark, because of course they're gonna transport this through the wilderness at different times. But the poles are never removed, and this is something that sets the Ark of God apart from all the other furniture items in the Ark. The table of showbread, the, the seven-branch candlestick, and the altar of incense, and so on. Those things, you know, they may be carried, but the only is the Ark described as we're putting the poles in and basically leaving them there. And that highlights the mobility issue, but it also highlights... The, the, it sets apart the ark in a very way. It's very particularly set apart from the other pieces. It is so much, so holy that we're not even going to hardly risk uh, anything. We're going to just put the poles in and basically leave them there. So that sets the ark apart from the other furniture. We're moving from the most deluxe, the most holy pieces, uh, sort of, so to speak, onward, sort of down a scale. But still all important and holy because it's in God's... Uh, Holy, this is in the most holy place. We'll talk about the construction of the sanctuary. Now, here's another thing you may or may not have noticed, and they're not really described in any kind of detail, but the ark has feet. There are feet at the bottom of the ark structure of this ark box. This box is going to contain the Ten Commandments. And although they're not described well, we do know that that would be lifting the ark up off the floor. It's highlighting the holiness of this extraordinary piece of furniture in the most holy place uh, inside the the sanctuary and so on. This the ark, the box of the ark is so so extraordinarily holy that even the box of the ark is the feet are added and constructed on the bottom so that the bottom of the ark is somewhere above the floor, even the floor of the most holy place. It is elevated even above the floor of the most holy place. The base, the base of the ark, not the feet, but the base is higher than the ground level. So this is again highlighting the very extraordinary holiness of the Ark 
of God, and of course, everything that has to do with the Ark. So, very interesting bits here. Now, I brought Sarna's commentary today because, and this is uh, the JPS Torah commentary, and you've got to, you know, read it from uh, backwards compared to English because it's, it's for the Hebrew, from a Hebrew perspective. But I have a paragraph here I wanted to share. The directions for constructing the tabernacle commence with the order to fashion an ark. This takes up the point made in 2412 that Moses is to ascend the mountain in order to receive the two stone tablets on which the Decalogue is incised. The ark will permanently house them, and it is therefore the focus of the entire enterprise. That is why the tabernacle as a whole, including the ark, features the instruction formula in the third person. They shall make, the people being the subject. This is distinct from the otherwise uniform wording for the other components, you shall make, addressed to Moses. It is the ark and its contents, the symbol of the covenant between God and Israel, that give meaning to the tabernacle, for the religio-moral imperatives of the Decalogue constitute the foundation of Israelite society. The maintenance of the community's spiritual and moral environment is the responsibility of the entire people, hence the directive they shall make. And that wouldn't be necessarily obvious to you because we haven't yet read the other pieces, but it'll be, you know, you shall make as we get into the table of showbread and so on as we go. But here the ark is they shall make. So that's a unique piece, and Sarna has pointed that out. Very interesting item. So I hope you've learned some things today about the ark of the covenant that uh, we're already in the text there, but maybe, maybe you saw some more bits.